Welcome to Military Mobility. We specialize in off-road expeditions and training. I'm Brian, President and Founder. We're really excited to bring to you our Land Rover LR3 shootout series where we are going to be comparing these two identical 2008 Land Rover LR3s, both HSE. This one with the stock air suspension and this one over here with the coil conversion. The categories in which we're going to be doing this. We've chosen seven. We've gotten a lot of input from all of our viewers. General overlanding. Where are you going to be taking this thing most of the time? On improved dirt roads, some minor rocks, accessing camping spots, going to climbing spots, photography, what have you. Cargo. What are we going to be carrying on a daily basis, day in, day out, or on these extended trips? How does the air suspension stack up when you start loading it down? How is the coil sprung suspension going to handle the additional weight? Sand. When we get into the loose stuff, what's going to be the difference in the driving dynamics, the shock dampening, the steering characteristics with the different suspensions that it has? Highway. Let's face it, we're going to access these places. We're going to be on the highway. We want to be comfortable. We want to see how it's going to perform or underperform. So we're going to be doing that. We're going to go at speed. We're going to test out braking, cornering, steering. My personal favorite, the rocks. We're going to get into the tough stuff. We are not scared to get these vehicles into some tough and precarious situations. So I, I think you're all going to really enjoy this. We're going to see how they handle, how the suspension travel is different how the terrain response system may have advantages or disadvantages with each as well. Water fording. How these vehicles stack up when we're transiting through some deeper water. Especially if we're out in remote locations, by ourselves, unaided, on extended trips. And finally, towing. One of the great capabilities of these Land Rover LR3s are their massive towing capacity. We're gonna hook them up to our 16 foot enclosed trailer with a decent amount of weight in there and see how they perform both on-road and off-road towing. Both of our LR3s are equipped with the Goodyear Dora Trek 275-65 R18 tires. It equates to roughly a 32 inch tire. They're both on identical 18 inch steel rims. Now, slight differences, we do have an ARB front bumper on here with a winch, and we do have an awning on our coil sprung Land Rover LR3. That is the only differences between these vehicles. As for our air suspension, the only modification we have on here is the Johnson Rods 3.0. We also have the gap tool for programming. Other than that, it is a completely stock vehicle. How are we gonna keep track of all this, you say? <laughs> Over here, we have our scoreboard. We have the black LR3, which is equipped with the air suspension, and we have our gray LR3, which is equipped with the coil suspension. As we go through, win, lose, or draw, we're gonna annotate here. We're really excited to bring to you this series. We absolutely love these vehicles. We love presenting this material. Please subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to be notified of our weekly updates when we release new episodes. And now we're gonna dive into the details of these systems with our lead instructor, Webb. With a lot of people wanting to get away from the air suspension, right? So there's, there's a lot of people are saying this is a completely unreliable vehicle. And, and I think when they say that, they're saying it, it primarily not because of the engine, this has the 4.4 Jaguar V8, but they're saying it because of the air suspension. Is that correct? Yes, and a lot of it is not knowing the suspension. Once you get in there and really understand it, it's not as bad as what people think, but it does have its glitches. Uh, the advantage and disadvantage, old reliable system, it won't go down like that. This one, uh, we've had that one drop down on its belly and cry like a little baby. <laughs> And, and there's pros and cons. Maybe with the air, there could arguably, and we're going to find out over the next couple days, some advantages, some things that it will do to help you out with the terrain response or from carrying loads or for comfort on the trail and on the highway. You know, this was a donated vehicle. It came to us on the bump stops. I was going to do the coil conversion. Webb and a couple other friends said, hey, give the air a shot. And I said, okay. 
And I spent the first half of COVID just kind of researching and figuring out the air system. And I'll tell you, I didn't know what was what. And I was just Googling things and watching YouTube and figuring it out. It's not that complicated, but uh, there are glitches, as Webb said, and we'll, we'll uh, address some of those. But I'm really happy that we, we, we kept it on there, especially so we can have it side by side for, for different people to ride. Now, what primarily goes wrong with the air system when it fails? The failures that we've had in the past, we've had compressors fail, we've had the, the air solenoids fail. But strangely enough, we've never had the lines fail. The plastic lines really, really tight. Which you'd think, because they almost look like they're small and brittle, right? They, they look terrible. <laughs> they work. Yeah. Even the older ones, you'd think it'd be brittle and breaking, and the lines have not been our problem. We did blow one airbag okay. in the rear. And that's pretty rare from what I'm, I'm hearing, right? Like the, the air shocks hard. themselves are not, but it's, it's normally the valves yeah. or, or uh, rusty, rusty reservoirs. The compressor. Yep or Land Rover's Nemesis, the wiring. Wiring can be... Okay, and that's out. where, I, I think for safety, Land Rover's looking at certain voltages where we were talking the other day, if, if a, a brake bulb might be out, it's gonna send a bad signal to the computer and it's not gonna allow you to get into that, you know, into, something, into yeah. a higher, higher mode because it wants to keep it safer and lower to the ground or, or whatever it's the case. Yeah. So, all that notwithstanding, doing some you know good troubleshooting, good maintenance as you always should, and keeping on top of things. Failures can happen, and, and that's where this could drop to the ground. So let's talk about tire selection. Now these, we have 275-65 R18. It equates to a 32-inch tire. We've been pleased with these. Webb was just telling me they've been going with the, the Coopers because they're they're, they're the same size, same numbers. Okay. They're slightly smaller. Right, because every manufacturer is just, every if you manufacturer. actually measure it, a little bit different. And what we've noticed is if the air suspension goes completely down, these will lock up in the fenders. And the, the uh, Coopers, when, when they went down, they didn't lock up in the fenders. Nice. So, it, I mean, that eighth or a quarter of an inch so what it needed so we could probably safely if you're at a maybe a 32 inch tire or 31 and a half you're going to be okay you're going to be a little safe but you know most off-road guys are wanting that that clearance and the bigger tire and then it, it gives you that issue so mm -hmm. you know if you go with the 32 it looks if like you're, you're going to be good you run in springs you'll never yeah, right you'll never go down in that position yep so that there's advantage yeah that, that is an advantage there now on some of the LR3s that you guys are running on some of the other vehicles, you did something where you made the air suspension independent? Since our onboard compressor was out of that one, we put another compressor on and then put a valve, electric valve switches in the glove box where you want a little more air We just and a gauge, we just add a little more air to it. It's just a simple valve or electric valve that adds air to the air suspension. Okay, nice. So if we put 600 pounds in the back we just puff it up a little bit right disadvantage and advantage we have those hooked both on one one circuit so if you get on a side camber it can actually shift it because of that okay so we're still working on things so go for that and what i did was i made just four independent lines the top of these air shocks are six millimeters i believe i'm remembering that correctly i just made four independent steel braided lines so if, if mine went down I can just jack it up and throw air and with a external compressor, because you're not relying on Land Rover or the computer at that point, just an external compressor, I have a Vi-Air, just load them up and each one and just get me off the trail like that. Now, it, it, and, and some people have chose to do that permanently. You can do that, I was thinking about it. The one thing you lose, you'll maintain all the terrain response system modes Land Rover does something with the pushing the air from one side to the other to help out with stability. Stability. As you, as you were saying. So if you chose to make, keep an air suspension, but make it independent air suspension, you would lose that ability of the terrain response system. Hmm. But see, the Land Rover's running off the sensors. So if one side's down, it, it'll be working the air accordingly. Okay. Okay. So it, it makes it work well. All right. I mean, the air suspension, when it's working, it's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. When it's the nightmare, <laughs> is when it does. Yep. 
That's why we have the backup system. We just always carry it around with the compressor. And here it, it takes up a little bit of space, just the, the, the coils with the compressor. And that's our compromise for keeping the air suspension on, on this rig to enjoy it and allow other people to, to ride and compare both vehicles that we have. You're gonna carry a compressor to reinflate your tires anyway. Right. So you're gonna have it. You could always always hook it up a CO2 bottle also. Yeah. You could CO2 it. All right, nice. All right, let's get these suckers on the trail. We're really excited to bring to you this series. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Please subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell so you can be notified of our new episodes as they come out every week. Stay tuned for episode number one, Overlanding, coming to you soon. We'll see you on the trail. If you like what we're doing, please support our veteran programs by donating at militarymobility.com. We are a 501c3 nonprofit and have no paid salaries. 100% of our funding goes towards running courses for veterans in need. Another easy way to support our veteran programs is by subscribing. You can also choose us as your Amazon Smile beneficiary. This is at no cost to you as Amazon pledges to donate a portion of their profits from your purchase.